Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us. It is a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let me take time out, first of all, to wish you Happy Easter. It's a great day in our Christian faith. And if you are a Christian, you know today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. The fact that on Friday, Good Friday, which we just remembered, was really speaking about the death of Jesus on the cross and all that he has done for us there. Today, we want to speak to you about he is risen. He is alive. And what does that mean for you and for me today? And how that resurrection presents us with a choice today. It puts before us life and death, blessings and cursings. And that is what we're going to focus on today. Before we get into the word, however, let us take some time just to pray and offer the service to the Lord, as we always do. Father God, we thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, that as I minister the word today, thank you, Lord, that the word will come through with clarity, understanding, dispelling all forms of confusion in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that you will now think through my mind, that you will speak through my lips. That, Lord, that as I minister the word today, let it not be heard as words from man, but let us receive this as you ministering to us in Jesus' name. And we thank you and give you glory for all that is to be accomplished in and through your word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, family, this morning, I want to lay a foundation and I want to read my scripture from Luke 24. So all the Gospels have got different accounts of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Today I want to have a look at what Luke said. Luke says here in, verse 20, in, in chapter 24, verse 1, it says, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women went to the tomb. They brought spices which they had prepared. But they had found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us stop right there. So this is speaking about where the followers of Jesus, after his crucifixion, went to the tomb where he was buried to go and find him, and they went there with spices, but they could not find the body. When they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. And today it would be similar like you going to the graveyard and you going to bring your respects to your loved one and you get there and the grave is dug up and there is no body in the grave. And that is what these women were faced with. This is what the disciples were faced with, the followers of Jesus. It goes on to say in verse 4, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed, they were confused, they were puzzled. How is the grave empty? How is the stone rolled away? That two men stood beside them in shining garments. These are two angels that appeared and stood before these followers. And this is what they said. And as they were afraid, they bowed their heads down to the ground. These two men said to them, why do you seek the living amongst the dead? Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? You see, Jesus is alive. He is not dead. He has been risen. And so the angels then said to these followers of Jesus coming to look for him, that you are looking in the wrong place. You are looking for the living amongst the dead. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Chantal preached a powerful message on taking off your grave clothes. And this message really told us that taking off those grave clothes was a deliberate decision. It was important that you and I take off the grave clothes because grave clothes restricts us. It hinders us. It stops us from reaching our full potential in Christ. And so the devil wants nothing more than to keep you bound in that grave, to keep you locked up and tied up in those grave clothes so that you can be restricted. 
But Jesus has stepped out of the grave. He is risen. In fact, verse 6, I'm still reading from Luke 24, says, He is not here, but He is risen. Remember how He spoke to you when He was still in Galilee. And Jesus said, The Son of Man must be delivered up in the, to the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And on the third day, he will rise again. If Easter Sunday never happened, if the crucifixion was all there was to Christianity, in other words, if Jesus' death and he remained dead in the grave, then we would today not be serving an, a God that is alive, but a God that is still in the grave. You see, friend, significantly, on the third day, which is Easter Sunday, Jesus came off the cross. And we find that in 40 days later, which is Ascension Day, which we will coincidentally be celebrating and remembering on the 18th of May this year, Ascension Day is where Jesus then rose to heaven. He ascended into heaven. So during the time from when He rose from the grave, on Easter Sunday to when he ascended into heaven that's a period of 40 days he appeared to many people he appeared I remember at once he, he appeared to his disciples and um, and Thomas wasn't there and on another occasion he appeared again and Thomas was there and Thomas then said unless I put my fingers in the holes the scars of your hands unless I see the scars on your body, I will not believe. And Jesus proceeded to show him. And it's because Jesus showed him, because he could physically touch and see Jesus, he then believed. And Jesus then turns around and he speaks to his disciples. He said, blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. And so yes, today you and I were not at the cross. We weren't and so yesterday, you and I were not at the cross. We were not at the gravesite. We did not stand amongst the crowd to see how Jesus was crucified. We did not go to the grave to find his body not there. But yet, we have not seen, but we will believe. And so the world teaches us that seeing is believing. But God says to us that believing is seeing. We will see Jesus once again, he will come back for his bride. And that is the promise that Jesus gives us. Jesus was given as the firstborn amongst many. Jesus was given as a seed. Listen to what the Bible says in John 12, verse 24. It says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of weed falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So any seed needs to be planted. And when the seed is planted into the ground and it dies, it will bring forth fruit. And so Jesus did exactly that. He paved the way for you and for me to go back to the Father, to be reconciled back to the Father. Jesus gone and he had prepared a place for us. You know, when he ascended into heaven, in John 14, 3, it records this. It says, Jesus speaking, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, so that where I am, you will be also. And so Jesus ascended into heaven to go and prepare a place for us. And he will come back for his children. He will come back for his bride. But you see, here's the truth of the matter. Jesus will come back for those who have received him as their Lord and Savior. So this awesome gift, the sacrifice that Jesus made by dying on the cross, was made so that you and I could find our way back to God. There was a sin that separated mankind from God. And that sin, that gap, could not be breached by human efforts. It needed the Son of God to go and to die on the cross. 
And today, because of the life, because of the fact that he had risen, so too can you and I be risen today. And so friend, the question is, what do you choose, life or death? Now, if I asked you that simple question, you would say, of course I choose life. But yet, as simple as the question is, I find so many people that reject Jesus as Lord and Savior. And by rejecting Him, you are choosing death. You are choosing to carry your own sin. You are saying, I reject the gift that Jesus had given me, this life that He has given up for me. I choose to carry my own sin. I will be held accountable for the sin that I have committed. And yet, Jesus says that I've done it all. I've given you life. I've presented you with this choice. The Bible, in fact, says in Revelations, Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. And our entire Christian faith is built on you opening up that door and inviting Jesus into your life. You see, friend, the end of the day, the choice remains yours. And God can push you towards choosing life. He wants you to choose life. He wants you to choose His Son as your Lord and Savior. But God is not going to force any choice on you. You know, one of the things that Jesus did just before He died, He partook of communion, the Passover meal. Jesus broke bread with His disciples. And while he was, they were sitting at the table and he was speaking about his upcoming death and resurrection. He breaks bread and he gives it to his disciples and he says, take this, eat it, for it is my body. It represents my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He then takes the cup and with wine, he says, this wine symbolizes my blood. Take of it. Drink it. This is the new covenant. A covenant between man and God. And as you drink it, remember it is for the forgiveness of sins. Remember what I did for you. And so the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. And then he goes and he rises from the dead and he defeats the devil and he takes all authority that the devil had received from the first Adam, he, re, he, he takes those and he gives it back to man. And that is why when you and I accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are no longer of this world. We are in the world, but we're not of this world. We now have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of His dear Son. And so Jesus' life that He had given us on the cross, then His resurrection gives us the authority and the life that we can enjoy in Christ. And so you say to me, Pastor Donovan, so how do I choose life and not death? It is very simple. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior will bring you into right standing with God. Today's message is all about salvation. Today's message is all about the Christian faith accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Him. I'm not talking about knowing about Jesus, about the Bible, about what He did for us, but I'm talking about knowing Him as our personal Lord and Savior. And that is what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so the Bible is very clear. Nicodemus once came to Jesus, he says, Lord, what must I do to be born again? And Jesus says to him, you need to go and you need to sell everything you have, give it to the poor and come and follow me. Jesus was telling Nicodemus that by following him, by accepting him as his Lord and as his Savior, he could go and he could then enter into eternal life. And today, friend, that is what Jesus still offers us today. And so if you're sitting here and you're listening to this message and you're remembering and celebrating Easter, but you're not fully aware of what Easter really represents, I want to tell you today, it is because of the risen Lord that we today have life. 
And so I want to invite you to pray a simple prayer with me that will bring you back into right standing with God. It will transform you from death to life. By praying this prayer, you will be saying and confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That will then give you access to eternal life. So friend, if you have not done this before, I want to urge you, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Perhaps you are listening to this and you have done this before. Perhaps you have given your life to the Lord, but somehow life happened and you drifted away. And today you cannot with certainty say that you have eternal life. You've got this gift of life. I want you to pray this prayer with me as well. Why don't we close our eyes right now, say this after me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you did on the cross for me. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I recognize you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross. And on the third day, you rose again. Come into my heart now, Jesus. And save me. Thank you for accepting me into your family. I ask Lord that you will help me now to walk a life that is worthy of my salvation. In Jesus name. Amen. Oh friend if you've prayed that prayer I want to congratulate you. This is the best decision that you've made. Easter Sunday is not just about Easter eggs, being a public holiday. It is so much more than that. And know this, that we will be praying for you as a church. We will be praying that God will fulfill what He has called you to do in your life. The Bible says in Philippians 2, He who started a work will be faithful to complete it. And so as you start this journey with Christ, or even if you, when you continue this journey with Christ, you might have been saved for a long time, I know that God is going to continue to use you to bring people to Him. Thank you for joining us today. And again, Happy Easter.